It's not. That's that's the attitude. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Hello and welcome to week twenty-three of Allies of Justice. I'm gonna kill these group right now. Yes, today. Kill these. Please group. don't. Excuse me. Do you mean kill this group? No, kill these no. group. <laughs> that's not correct. You're he's wrong. so he's so pissed. Grammar has stopped having meaning. You to see it. that one over there? Yeah, he's dead. Oh god, what uh, was he pointing to? The one with no camera. <laughs> There's two of them. Is that yeah. me? Yeah. You take your. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> oh, I'm probably gonna die IRL anyways. Yeah. Fucking say IRL. I did say IRL. IRL. Oh, I kill her. IRL. So, besides, yeah, anything important? Weeks. New Year. Yeah, Christmas. New Year. Yeah. Everything, everything went okay. Everything went pretty good. I got fucking smashed at a friend's house. It's all pretty. I got uh, really fucking ill the day after, uh, but I'm good now. My voice is back, and uh, for the sacrifice that I made. Sarah's voice is now gone. We made a trade, it was good. Great. I took the week to fix a, an old ass PS2 that I tried to like take apart. It really just needed a cleanup. Aliens is now a shadow for me. For anyone else? Yeah, yeah I'm, he always I'm, is. I'm the freaking you might want to like I'm, close your I'm the freaking I'm the freaking benefactor from XCOM. I see. Hello, Commander. <laughs> Any, uh... Well, if that's everybody's weeks, why don't we go ahead and get this thing started? I saw monkeys. Nice Let's job. Good. Yep, dead. So, who wants to do the recap? Well, um, what happened in the beginning of last session? Um, we were in the middle of the caravan. Um, well, three people were in the middle of the caravan. A Miss Naomi, a Miss uh, Crystal, and a Miss uh, Farah Astrid. They were having some girl talk about um, Crystal's supposed not so much but kind of is boyfriend. Um, she's still crushing on him. Uh, they were speaking of certain other, I, like, that, that, like, that was, like, the main highlight for me in terms of girl talk. Like, they didn't really talk about a lot of anything else. Um, I remember Vedran came in to talk to them about, like, hey, caravan stuff is going okay, everything's fine. As well as, I believe, Yaji also came in, just to say. I, I also got roped in into the talk about uh, Crystal's death, and they got the hots. Oh, yeah. For Cap. Mm hmm Yeah. So that, that, so that was all a cute moment. Yaji was all serious, intense stuff, as far as said. Um, after that, uh, we went to the front of the caravan with Adze just looking out, make sure everything's okay. Um, and Akko and Kite steering the Garnox? Gar Garnox? Garnox. 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 <clears throat> and they feeling the f fatigue, um, suggested that they start to make camp. Kite agreed. So, as he was going to go around, talk to everyone, say, hey, we're making camp. Unfortunately, Yaji was the first one to come by, and so, as he just had to quickly rush past him and say, hey, we're making camp, and that was it. Um, Fucking rude. <laughs> uh, but I believe, I don't think we, we roleplayed him telling the girls that, but we told the girls that. Um, he also told um, Mul uh, Mulan about it, and she, actually, no, Yaji told Mulan about it. Adze was about was went and tell her, but then Yaji and her had a, were having a conversation. He he, the, they had a conversation specifically about uh, his spirits for one, 
um, that he should probably be wary of that, considering that witches tend to keep spirit slaves, and so some some people can get um, uh, blah, what's the term? Uh, confused. Judgmental. By it. Judgmental. Yes. So they were talking about a bit a bit a bit shop about ruin and such. Um, but then while well, as as it was doing that, a Miss Kite and Akko saw a big mound in the distance. They're like, "Huh, that hill." Kite's like, "That wasn't there before." We're like, "Oh, well, that's interesting." But then the mound moved, and then a big, huge, not xenomorph head came up, like had like a big, you know, thing in the back of its head. Yeah, in the temple, and um, it was eating a like, humanoid thing, and there were little tiny things around it. <clears throat> And then Akko, who <laughs> couldn't see it very well, but then but then realized that he failed to see something in front of him, it just it ticked him off. Like it just it just so something snapped in, in in his little thing, and he started going to a rage, um, punching Kite in the face, uh, and wrestling her. <clears throat> but while they're wrestling, um, I believe. I think okay, so Kite 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 and we're at first. Essentially big fight. Uh mutants coming at us. Uh some of them biting on the Garnox and the Garnox trampling over Crystal and almost Naomi. Um Crystal fell unconscious, but we were we were able to heal her. And we defeated the mutants while we did not engage the big one as it just walked off. And mutants, unfortunately, kind of look Similar to something, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but, uh... Turns out these mutants were an evolution of... Mu- of mutation... Of certain of certain types of mu- mutation. Well, actually, all types of mutation, technically. When, after you have it for a long time, it'll de- eventually degrade your mind. And you'll just go crazy and rabid. And we also saw a Sermata corpse, unfortunately. Lizard people. And we were about to make camp. That was essentially the long and short of it. So, where we pick up today, the camera opens up where it normally does. Floating above the, still forecast, land of Arturo. A couple of hours out from Elp to the south. As it moves quickly past the churning waters that births large, forgotten creatures in its depths. It goes over each wave before finding itself among the sandy beaches, spattered with gore and red, and sprinkled bodies being prepared for a pyre before the camera moves past that and starts to get lost in the thick underbrush of the Artorian forest. Which, at this point, go ahead and take it away, Yashi. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're gonna do that. Yeah, my place. So, as we all first enter in the room, and as I attempt to shut off my computer, <laughs> I don't think it wasn't that loud considering the other. It's thing. louder on my end. Uh, okay. Alright. So as we get in, first along the outer edges of the room, there'll just be a long, clear pathway um, meant for the caravans to be guided through with the Garnox. Right in the dead center is a large bonfire pit surrounded and being connected by with a bunch of canopies or canopies walkways that would be connected to 10 different houses all of them varying in either actual house sizes of houses or some of them just large groupings of trees and then uh, you got you got a couple different ones one of them slanted one of them is tall a few of the trees are colored differently very very faint fragrances are filled throughout the place and 
that's the beginning. So as you move through the what was a forest, you're all taken back as you step in here, minus those that's been in here already. I think it's just Echo at this point. Echo and Naomi. Oh, Naomi too? And technically, yeah, just Echo and Naomi. But you're all taken aback as you look through the forest that was originally a forest. And you see these very well articulated and structured buildings that you don't believe was in here prior to your travels. It's as almost if, as if someone moved a settlement and rose it into this specific area. And did you make a can- like tree canopy roof, or is it still open? Oh no, it's it's all open because we don't want to trap smoke. So there's a light forecast still um there's forecasts in the sky and there's still a light bit of rain filling the area but it is breathtaking uh so it would okay never mind i I think i see what you're saying i think probably if you're i I thought i thought we were were talking about about it you didn't okay Okay, wait. All right. So, as we enter this area, I will look at the entire thing around him. Is just in wonderment, just look and ask, how is this possible? Is this a uh, magic some kind? It's a little bit of magic. The forest helps out when I need it. Right. Just look incredulous at me as you agree. All right, if you say so, like he's he, he can't think of anything really to say because just what he's seeing in front of him is already impressive enough to make him question how the hell. Sounds interesting. It is. As Mulan would move next to you, Yaji, and say, Not too bad. This is actually pretty impressive. Are we just taking random places? No. Um, no. Yaji will point to the... to the two larger-sized houses and uh, say that um, one of those is for Akko and Kite over there. He'll point over to a circle of trees with autumn on type leaves, golden, red in color. And that one over there is for veteran. Ah, okay. The one with the slight slanted roof, that is that's AIDS. Mm. And then the one on the far left with the circle of trees. Um that one is for crystal. My bad, Naomi. And the one directly to the far right, which would be next to one of the bigger ones, where I assume Kite would have gone into. Uh, that one is for you, move on. And then Ferris would be the one right in the dead center. Uh, and then that one is for you, Pharaoh. And then sharp, sharp tooth is going to be the. It's 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 a bit medium sized, and that's going to be um. As far as away as I could from the bigger houses, so I would assume right next to, where Naomi's is, and I go that one is for you, sharp tooth. The sharp tooth gets home. Of course. <gasps> he runs off towards it. <laughs> As Crystal would look at you and say, 
This is really impressive, Yaji. The last time I made this, you were kind of to yourself. Yeah, well... Thank you. This one's mine, yes? Um, yeah, that one, because it's going to be the only one left. And that's going to be the, the tall, the tallest one. She gives a nod and begins to move towards it, still walking with a little bit of a limp. Uh, actually, a great bit of a limp. So are we going to have to do watches in this, or does it not matter? It won't matter here. If anything tries to come in, I will know. Right. I'll probably be uh, meditating a bit before I go to sleep. Summon those weapons that uh, can only do that so many times. Well, I don't want to waste your efforts. Kite, I suppose I can leave you to the caravan and the Garnox. Aye, ma'am. Very good. Well, this is exciting. I never had to live in a forest before. <laughs> As Bulan would move towards the house that you designated for her. Or him. It'd be a circle of trees for her. As currently Crystal, Lulan, Kite, and Sharptooth seem to trail off to do their own things, leaving the small amount of the group still together. And they would just pick up his stuff and start heading to his home. Well, he's certainly in a hurry. He seems to be avoiding me a lot. There, there'd be a small, small hint of pain on Yaji's face. If anybody needs me, I'll be in my. Hi. You guys need to eat something first. No, after what happened, I call you the bite. <laughs> I believe I still got some rations left. I ate more than enough before we got here. I mean, I think all of you did too. But still, like seven hours ago, or give or take. Yeah, like seven hours ago, you wouldn't get hungry. But uh, no, I still have these meats that need to be eaten soon. As he'll he'll start heading to the to the big bonfire in the center, just trying to get it prepared and ready to go. Then we would uh, get into a kind of cross-legged position in front of the um, bonfire, just kind of sit down with a sort of vacant look. You'd imagine it would be whatever the meditation thing he was talking about. Aka. Right. As everybody goes on their own for a bit, I will just take a moment to you know, be in his own, just look look at himself for a moment, just after the episode of Rage that he just went through. He just thinks, I need to control it. I need to do it. Like he says that to himself aloud. It seems to be more of a exercise is also to try and calm his nerves. If anybody will look at it, look at that and haven't seen the previous episode, it will appear that this isn't the first time he's had that issue. And it's not the it's not something that he was expecting to happen. Well 
the one to be able to see that currently as you're doing that a heavy-handed fall on the still damp turf next to you as Kite still has her cowl currently covering her head her arms crossed and her fingers folded into a tent in front of her while she looks forward keeping her eyes off of you, but looking towards the bonfire that Yaji is beginning to prepare. She sits motionless and silent. The only thing making noise on her is her occasional swash of her tail. He looked to her and uh, quietly asked, How are you holding up? She'd look over herself, pull up her tunic to just about midriff, where there's just a huge bruise left from where the Garnox rammed her. As she touches it and slightly winces before putting the shirt down and dismissing the pain. I've been through worse. How about you? I'll manage, it's would say. There's still... Obviously, given everything that's happened, there's several scars over Akko's body, but... It doesn't seem to be faced by many of them. While a lot of them seem to be from his adventures with the guys, he clearly looks like he's got quite a few from way before that. He would look at her and say, if you need me to, I can go ask Crystal for a bit of help. I'm sure she'd be able to use her staff. I'll see once the morning comes. If I can rest it off, then I can rest it off. Alright. She would, like, turn her head. Her gaze, like, looking down at you for the first time. We good. Yeah, we're good. He really doesn't want to, tr to try and get into the rage because he's trying to avoid the topic. So, unless somebody prods him, he may keep it to himself. She just looks at you, her eyes like scanning over your face. She'd close her eyes and give you a nod before, like, turning her head back to the bonfire, which, like a bolt striking down from the heavens, it begins to ignite as Yaji finishes successfully putting it together. As the radiant heat from the flames begins to encompass this entire area. And ever since you guys been in here, it's not, like, cold or uncomfortable. It's the type of tempered that you feel like it's like you're always getting the cold side of the pillow when you're sleeping. It's just comfortable in here. And while this is all happening, Adze, you finally make it to your dwelling. Oh, I sent him a description. Well, you're going to have to read it now. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Mm. As you get a hand on the door and push it open and look inside. It's cute. Oh, okay. I got it, I got it, I got it. All right. So I have um, a homely style lodging stands before you. It is wooden nature with a slightly slanted roof towards the lower side where the roof is being... On the floor, there's a long trough to collect whatever would have been fallen from the roof. As you enter in, on the far side of the room against the wall is a small table with 
three chairs and then right on the wall just above the table are several jutting hooks where you can hang a few of your belongings in the middle of the room on the ground would be a fireplace the few sticks laying nearby for either for tinder or to cook with um, and then hanging hanging in the corner is a long large type of hammock it looks like it's like woven with a bunch of ivy and then just right above it is a very tinier version of it as he would squint at the two hammocks. And while just... you're in here just looking at everything, you get the strange sense of deja vu. He doesn't like that. <clears throat> but it's his home for now, so he just puts his stuff on the ground, hangs up his... Uh, the um, poncho. And sets his bow to the side. And he also... Looks at the two hammocks, one at the large one, and then looking up at the smaller one. <sighs> Shakes his head and just goes to sit down on one of the chairs and just rests, folding his arms and rests his head on the table. Sitting here and contemplating everything that's just going on in your mind and through your head you just can't shake off the feeling that you aren't in this exact place it's like you're in an out of body deja vu as like you look around and you feel like you've been here but the proportions are wrong this is too small compared to what you had in your deja vu As he doesn't like the feeling, he's gonna go over and start trying to undo the little hammock. He doesn't. He doesn't like that at all. He's gonna try and move the table to some other part of the. He's tr he's trying to make this not look as. <laughs> what was I'm looking for? As similar to what he's sight. What's what he's seeing in his mind. He's trying to wipe that deja vu away. As you begin to undo the hammock that seems to be made from nature and try to move the table that also seems to be made from that equal amount of nature you get happy as you just shove just shovel stuff around as you kind of give yourself a nod and turn back as you start to see the vines rewrap themselves the table move back to its original place as if it was made by a design that seems to be encoded into the entire area itself Anthony would get this real look on his face and he would just walk out of the home, just hands on, on his head, just shaking and shaking his head and just heading out somewhere that's not there. Meanwhile, Naomi, you make it to your dwelling on the other side of the clearing. And I'm assuming that's me again. Oh, yeah, it's always me. Yeah. Yeah. So a circle of trees will stand before you with one missing. Um, blocking that path, there's going to be like several, several leafy branches. There's like, a, there's enough leaves that will block the view, making the makeshift door. As you move them away, you can step inside as you're suddenly bombarded with an array of flowery sense uh, once you get over that sensation you'll see in the room that there's just it, it's entirely filled with arrays of flowers of many types of colors and varieties of whatever this forest can provide um, towards towards the back of the room you'll see there's a small comfy bed it's very low to the ground and beside it is a very simple dresser you can put a few of your things there's also a little table and a little chair with a little water mirror for your needs she smiles at the sight of that and looks at the some of the flowers closer 
And then she'll take a seat at the table and pull out her Defenders of the Future book and start perusing the pages a bit. You find yourself on a particular arc in their story where the heroes in the book find themselves at a particular odds with themselves. Toa recently lost due to a mishap or foolish actions the group didn't know. And the others slowly starting to break apart. One of the parts that's hardest for you to actually continue reading back when you were younger. Not knowing if the heroes in the story would actually go back to being the heroes you expected and not this. As you get a little further into the chapter, staying in here for close to an hour. I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> So as the scene moves on, Yaji, I need you to make a couple of survival checks. Boy. Does my foresting proc from that too? Um, no, not in here. You'd have to go in the forest. Or, or wait, no, I'm thinking about Hunter. So, yes. Alright, well. First one's a 19, the other one's a 24. So, that is well enough to cook rabbit. As the alluring, though pretty unseasoned, just really natural, gamey scent of roasted rabbit starts to fill the area, as almost if carried on an unnatural breeze to alert all of your you guys to the intention that it's being made. And even though you did eat a while ago, people eat more than once, so... He ate a lot. Uh, that's like eating one big meal in a day. Yeah, but you can eat several small meals behind it. I you want to get fat. Oh, don't worry, I'm sure you'll keep your being finger. a pretty boy and eat the rabbit. <laughs> uh, he's doing the meditation, thank you. And I don't Fair know how enough. long That's I need to do it for, because be fucking Ash still won't write it down. Fight me. Come on, come on, man. Real men have curves. Well then, Adze would <laughs> high-strong saunter over to the rabbit and just sit down and wait for it to be done. Your possible son meets you at the bonfire. The bonfire there's no, there's gives no off a very warm, refreshing feel that seems to like ward off the numb, chilling feel that your wet clothes have been giving you since being in this rainy weather for this long period of time. Yaji will will look up to see Adze sitting nearby as he uh he'll, he'll smile a little bit and begin focusing a bit more more intensely on the the meat trying to make sure it doesn't get burned. Oh, well, Adze's just looking at the fire, seemingly like contemplating something, but not making any eye contact with Yaji. Definitely not saying anything. And as like father and son, 
You stay there silently, aware of your all, both of your presences, but choosing not to be the first to initiate. Around this time, coming from his house, currently dressed in what looks like, at best, the carcass of a small woodland creature. A naked sharp tooth would come out, dagger cleaning his teeth as he's like stretching about and seems to make his way over to the bonfire in a jubilant nature of sorts. So he's completely naked? He's wearing what looks like an animal carcass as underwear. Okay. Okay. It's a different picture. As I thought for a moment that there was that everything was flapping about. I was like, what? I, I thought he was wearing the skin, like an actual skin of the animal over his own skin. <laughs> As they would look over at Sharptooth, where did you get that carcass from? Nowhere. <laughs> As it would raise an eyebrow. Really? He would shake his head no and say yes. Did you get it from the monsters we fought earlier? No. All the you didn't steal from the caravan, did you? I don't know what that word means. The carts that we've been traveling in. Nope, that word too big for me too. The things with the wheels that move. Move? Move. The things that the big Garnox has been pulling. Kind of shivers at the word Garnox. Yes, the big thing. You don't want to steal from the big thing, do you? I didn't steal from the big thing! Or the things that it's carrying, right? That's not it. Well, it belongs to our dear client. And thus, those things belong to it's and we already saw how mad it can get it no one mad at sharp tooth it mad at you me for what you don't stand next to garnox garnox be mad that's just stupid stupid humies <laughs> Look if, he's, look, if he took that from the wooden things that we've been protecting this entire time, give it back. No! So, okay. So, no, so as Adze is talking with Trump to like, Aqua was approaching the fire and just... He stands behind Trump to just listening to part of the last bit. Sharp tooth. His head just like pulls upwards to look at you. Oh, hi, big boss. Did, did you steal that? You just ask right away. Like he, he's not missing words here. No. He shakes his head. Yes. Are you lying to me right now? Yes. So he shakes his head no. I will just pick him up, like, gently, mind you. Like, he's, he's not being violent. He's like, you're going to put that back where it should be. But I got it! 
I don't care. You're doing it. Oh, perhaps maybe he would like this better. As I will pull out my, my own rabbit skins that I still have left. His eyes, like, go wide for a moment, but then narrow because you're giving it to him. Or maybe I should just throw it away. I mean, no one needs it. Gimme, gimme! Well, you have to give yeah. those ones back. Why? That's what he said. Because they what were not given. Do it or not? They're, they're not garbage yet. But I don't want to go back to stupid Humi Town. No, I don't want to get that. To. Then how am I going to give it back? You, you take these. You put these on. And then you give those back. I give you? And I get get? Yes. Me no go town? No. <laughs> you stupid! You stupid! He takes, starts taking it off. Because <laughs> I was like, ah. I don't want to make it. Do Crexes not know how to trade, as they asks? Are you asking Sharptooth? Yeah. Don't know how to trade. Crux is best at trading. So describe trading. <laughs> you stupid! I will just, <laughs> just put Sharptooth down as he changes because he does not want to be holding a naked Crux. <laughs> Probably for the best. I mean, I haven't averted my eyes yet. So what does it look like? <laughs> no. <laughs> do imagine, no. imagine a tiny dragon. You're gonna have to rule the sanity check. <laughs> I'm not describing that. So. Okay. <laughs> just, just pee on a tiny Oh no. We don't, we don't Why? Want to, we don't want to know this. <laughs> and we don't want to make this more awkward than it already is. He Ella already Crystal is. With that single that statement, PM it to me. What? <laughs> <laughs> but after getting changed, he looks at the carcass he has and kind of just gives it a couple of fond rubs before... Like, turning his head and just holding it out towards you, Yashi. As I will take it and start heading towards the caravan where I, where I hopefully see somewhere that's disrupted to put it back in. As you actually put in the effort to try to find it, you don't find anything that's disrupted. You don't see anything that seems like there's any stock missing. Alright, well then how about I take a look at the corpse? It looks like a... Kind of a ferret. Which is nothing of the stuff that's here. Hopefully our client didn't... Alright, well, well for the record, I did roll a sense motive on him. And I didn't get an answer because I wasn't looking at it. Oh, okay. It's a 17. What were you sense motiving at the time? I think it was when he was explicitly asked if he took it from the caravan, not from Echo. It was when Adze was doing it. He did not take it from the caravan. I believe he didn't. You believe he did not take it from the caravan? So then I'm just gonna slowly, you know, start start going around the area seeing for anything that's 
that's off. Because to my knowledge, I haven't seen this type of thing nearby. When I say nearby, I mean it wasn't in the caravan. They aren't trading ferrets. Yeah. Is a ferret common in these woods? Yes. Oh, okay. Weasels, ferrets. Well, I don't know. I've, ne I've never actually known what a wild habitat is for that. So, it's odd why he has this. He shouldn't have this. Doesn't seem to be coming from here. Or the caravan and whatnot. So, he didn't steal from him. Them. You think? Yeah. Oh, with that, I'm just going to head head back. I'm going to... Well, as you were going around... Ah, right, right, right. At the campfire... You have a moment of having no Yaji while Adze and Akko are kind of standing there while Sharptooth is lamenting his lost ferret. Hmm. Akko seems to just take his time currently to check on what he has uh, on his pack at the moment. Yeah, look over to Adzi just for a for a brief moment and just ask How's that bow hole in so far for you? Um it's fine. Still staring at the fire. You alright? It's nothing you need to worry about. Adze, we're traveling together. It is something to worry about. Just the worst case of deja vu. He looked puzzled for a moment, but then he just put two and two together like, oh. Oh. Okay. No. I am. Um, I'll change subject, he'd say. Thank you. <sighs> I didn't hurt anyone back there, did I? <laughs> he looks at you confused. Hurt anyone? Yeah. No, why would you hurt anyone? No reason, never mind. It just say that, just thinking, okay. Clearly it didn't affect anybody yet, so... Why would you hurt someone? Why would you hurt someone, Akko? Uh, sometimes I get carried away, that's all. Big Boss did Big Boss things and was going to flatten Dragon Lady. You... Okay. Did you, ha did you have a spite with Kite, should I, should I, should we have someone else drive the cart with her if you have a problem? Hey, don't you pick on Big Boss, he has no problem. Try to, don't worry, I, I guess I better explain this now than never. No sense in particularly hiding this. Explain what? Had a... Had a moment of rage. That's the best way I can put it. I mean, everyone gets angry. No. Uh, uh, he, um, he, 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 look, he looks like he's frustrated by saying this, but like, that's only because he's had to explain this before. It's not normal rage. It's something that happens with half orcs. So, what exactly happens? Oh, well, to put it bluntly, um, 
rage is something I always have to keep in control. Sometimes if I can't, then I get violent. Violence... in what way exactly? He get big, he get strong. Big Boss, I think you could even take a Garnox on. You could be the new Slayer of Garnox. Trapped it. No, I don't, I don't want to slay things. This is not something I like happening. But there needs to be another Slayer of Garnox since the last things. one died. So, How else would you get favor with Gungand? I don't want to get favor with anyone. At least not that way. Uh, so, Akko, um... Violent, I mean, can't you, like, aim your frustrations on the enemy or a nearby tree or something? Oh... Well, no, it's, it, it's a blinding thing, like... The best way I can put it is... It starts with a pain. It's like somebody setting fire inside your body. The only way to calm it down is just harm whatever is closest to you. What? Whatever or whoever? Whoever. I see. So I managed to keep it down for quite a while, but I don't know. I guess with all the traveling we've been doing, I've been forgetting that it's a thing. So, do you have any idea what causes it? Like, should I be keeping everyone a good 10 meters away from you? I'll try and keep better track of it. That's the only thing that really works. It's a, it's a thing with all how it works, practically. Okay. Well... At least that's the way that my family explained it to me. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you... Well, I'm talking to you right now, and you're saying that you went into this rage when we were fighting the mutants? I'm pretty sure it must have been then. I basically blacked out for a while there. Okay. Um, pretty sure I tried to hurt Kite. Is... Have you talked to her since then? Are you get too cool? I have, but she seems alright. I don't know if she's dealt with it before with someone else or not. Okay. So, did you just punch her a few times and you stopped? I don't know. It's difficult to recall what happens when you're in that state. That's why I asked you. I see. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to ask Kite about that. About exactly what got you out of it. Um, well, in the meantime, just keep track of it. If you feel like you're about to pop, just, you know, try to steer clear of most of us, especially the squishies. Like, yeah, I know. Keep a fair distance away from Naomi and Crystal. Yeah. All right. Shouldn't happen again. I hope. Right. Well. So it's around this time an hour pass passes, and veteran. You feel. the wake inside of you fill back to its brim. Cool. 
as you smell something delicious. And you also have the heat of the bonfire in your face as well. Oh, yeah. Foam. Oh, what's <laughs> this? Is okay. So where is he? And like, is he, is he right next like, to us? Right behind away. you guys. Yeah. Okay. And Yashi is away right now. Completely Correct. silent and like not moving. Like it could be very believable. You never noticed he was there. Yeah. As he turns around. Oh. Um. <laughs> Yashi was. He was cooking. I think it was rabbit. Is there still some left? Okay, so has Yaji finished and has he been giving it out? Has does he can't Ate give it out if he's busy talking, doing the thing. So, okay, he's doing something else. Okay, so no, it's still on the pyre, I believe. So I can take some. I think you should probably wait until the cook comes back and tells you it's ready. No, Looks ready. Everybody eats once. Sorry. Side comment. Don't worry. Oh, I was talking to uh, Alfie. Oh, sorry, what, what, what did you say? <laughs> Why would you say that? It's not relevant. Say what? Huh? It was a side comment. It doesn't matter. That's why Michael. I said don't worry about okay. it. Stop bringing it <laughs> up. Just listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's... Uh... Not ready yet, so I suggest we just wait for Yashi to come back doing whatever he was doing. Well, it looks ready. Look, if you want to pick it up and take it, I'm, I'm not going to stop you. I mean, um... So as I take your word for it, I'm not exactly good at cooking. Well, neither am I. I'm just... Assuming he knows what he's doing. Which is around this time. Naomi, what are you doing? Finishing up the chapter. And then... I guess I'll smell the food, so I'll get up and... Go check it out. <laughs> As you leave your dwelling, the curtains kind of move on their own as you walk towards them. And out there you can see the visage of a couple of people standing next to the fire. Some people sitting around it. But overall, it seems like people are communing next to it. Cool. Oh, hey. Oh, what have you hi. been doing? Oh, just reading my book. Right. Got to any good parts? Um, sort of. Hmm. Well, we're all around a campfire right now. Want to tell us a story, Naomi? Was the one I was like, did anything cool? <laughs> oh, but yeah, I done something he's cool. very cool. Good. Hmm. It's around this time, Yashi, you'd make your repro uh, approach again. As I'll still be carrying the, uh... <clears throat> The, the fur it or whatever it is. Um, but before that, it, like, did it look like it got bitten by any of the runes with their green stuff? No. Just looks like a ferret. Okay, just making sure. I'll, I'll be coming back and just like... Just like... At, at, 